I would assume so, to be honest. There's something that has to explain the BS that we have, but well, there's not really much to explain here, at least for now, as we start off our game. Obviously, this is game number one for today, Matriku, on the Chinese side, facing off, uh, as you can see here, Broken Youth, or uh, what we call Jesus. Let me check the CLR browser. There we go, that should be added. And let's start this one on. Obviously, we are playing on Siege of Shanghai, your squad obliteration and what usually happens on siege is that stalemate that we see right now obviously the power of that us side is the ability ability to grab the uh, the bomb very very quickly off the start but i really like the place from kevin's how he's actually moving by the smoke though he will get tagged is very very important here because he can catch somebody off guard here maybe get a frag or two but he's already sandwiched taken down a nice speaker on and this is what i like don't sit too far back into your base you know, play send one or two players try to scout out the actual map before you know just don't stay back and be scared of everything exactly especially because uh kevin was so uh advanced in his position that even if he died uh the enemies will not have the time to make a snowball effect and to rush uh that uh, that big road so it was a nice play and it had no consequences so why not? Why not? Obviously here, Drake sitting in the back. This is a very good spot to watch any rush that comes down on a C if you want to go for a plant. And uh, well, Zenith is sitting back watching Waterside. So usually what we see, at least from the Americas players, and we're going to be seeing that tonight as tonight is cup number one for the Americas. Brett's going to be casting that on the ESLB 4 channel. Uh, we're going to host them later, obviously. But this is uh, what happens. They always have a player going from the water side always trying to flank you lose that one player as we were saying but he's so far, far pushed into the enemy territory that it's so difficult to go for a snowball effect and kill you know one two three and then grab a bomb yeah here we go jesus coming in two frags from matriku will push fast back or the players here from jesus and make that a third oh boy two players left alive for Jesus, and this is the snowball effect as you were talking about here. Test moving up, he's trying to grab another frag, but Kupski with one spray from object, not gonna hit anything. But the bomb in control of the Chinese side. This is a very good spot to be in if they could actually take down two or three players again from the US side of Jesus Christ, they will have a chance. Che Guevara making the, the back trap right now. He can make a huge work if he is uh, able to fulfill his work. And he is one kill. Commandante! Two yeah, kill, okay. Kill. He may, like, he just won the. Maybe the game, I don't know, but. Pretty he just much. did a huge work. Because on that map, you have like two uh, attempts uh, at defending. The first one is the basic position. And then if you lose the basic position, you have this big uh, balcony where to camp. And uh, the only way, the best way, I mean, to kill the guys are to back them. And he just did perfectly. But the rush then failed. Now Zenith with a perfect position. And. Oh my. Server, please. Rasia is no. There's there's no Rasia. Whatever. Oh my lord, did I was I the only one to crash or did you crash as well? Oh no, I didn't crash. I'm sorry. I, I thought you were okay. So you are not in the game anymore. No, I don't know why. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, I'll try to reconnect. Then. Well, I can't tell what's happening right now. Uh, right now, there is. Um, uh, MTK is defending his uh, C point, and uh, there is only two players alive in the other team, so nothing is moving right now. You can join without any any problem. Okay. So let's try to hop in, I guess. Rip server, no, it's just me. There we go. So, no bomb plants happen in the meantime, so we didn't really miss anything. But let's start this one again. Uh, that spawn shot that sometimes appears in the screen shakes, that the player spotted, what does it mean? Yes, when you when you see it, it's, it's like a plick. And then you have the the player being spotted. Obviously, uh, in in uh, squad obliteration, you don't spot the actual bomb unless the player that's carrying it is spotted. Yeah. Uh, which is very nice. 
It means that you can't really just you know look at your your screen or you can look at your mini map all the time. You will need to go for a spot. So that teamwork, that relaying of the information, just multiplied by a thousand. Otherwise, we're going to just go full wool hack on the guy with the bomb, and it's not pretty funny. much. It's not funny anymore. Well, that's basically what we had at the start of uh, Squad Obliteration. So it's yeah. nice to see these things, you know, fixed and uh, unexploitable, if you will. Uh, devs. At least the one dev that's working on this uh, with all the community work. Uh, very, very nice here. Zenith turning around, grits the frag on Drake. Nice headshot, but the bomb is still below. This is taking a lot of time to actually kill Koopski. It's just a bit weird. There you go. Here's the jump. Here's fast Kevin's as well. Coming off from behind. Here's the full wipe there. In control. Che Guevara is all on his own. And what the co can the Comandante do here? As he gets the spawn for Drake who pulls back now Drake in a very good which wants to go for a very good position which is pretty much just holding that upper side the second floor on the mall itself you can do so much in that kind of situation and this push is getting a bit def desperate as the boys from Jesus Christ eSport want to play for this and go for the bomb plan but kill after kill here's three down seems like we're turning into the same situation that we we're in at the start of this round yeah you can say how it's um nice um, balanced match for now because every time a team has the bomb they're rushing and the other team is able to take good lines and to like not wipe them but make them in such a bad situation that they have to retreat and uh, you can tell both teams are, are doing this job of pushing dying and being the defenders uh, suddenly so yeah nice job for both teams that are like not playing um, retarded at all they are not committing all their, all their players uh, at at once Speaking of I, commitment, I, I'm sorry about the retarded terms, but that's how we, <laughs> we talked about uh, some threats in Infamous. Our, our threats, you know, we have uh, the retarded threat, we had the retarded threat, <laughs> which is pretty much just sending Jazer to do everything. No, uh, yeah, screaming, you know, he was <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. Well, I, 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 I've already watched all the videos, so I guess it's okay. I wish we still had uh, ESL comms like we did at the last season for Domination. But to be honest, I fucked up twice with the TeamSpeak stuff, so I don't think I want to do that again. Yeah, I wish we could have that on CSGO though, because uh, having the comms is so nice for the viewers. Uh, in my opinion, it's the best thing after Orchestra, having the comms up. Uh, yeah, but, but still, I mean, it, it does invade a bit of the privacy, and sometimes course, you say things that you shouldn't be said. Well, but here yeah. we go. Uh, the boys at Jesus Christ Esport are pushing up. They're going for the bomb plan. Here's the kill assist. But four players left alive on Matriku. They're still right behind the actual objective here. They're jumping down. Here's one kill. But the second immediately refrank from Che Guevara. But getting taken down. Well done from Zenith and Horning guys. It's the last alive. He's right on C. This is what a spot. He can get all of his teammates to spot back in. Do they actually hear this respawn? Horning guys. Jumping down, three players now on Seaside, he gets the shot on the Chevy, who's turning in, not seeing anybody, 1-2, falling down, but Kevin and Zenith with a couple kills on their own, here's Kevin, turning around, he gets the shot, nice onto one. Horming, but that bomb is being defused, and there we go, gets the kill from Drake, but still fast, did he do it, he's, uh, it's down to one versus one, did he get the last one, here's all the revives, all, this, all the uh. respawns, and oh my god, they all fall to the ground, Koopski and Ajit just going ham there, and that was it for this push, I guess. And now, Mutriku have the, the uh, time and the opportunity to go all the way across the map to that B-side. This is where you were talking about having yeah. multiple tiers of defense. But since they all got wiped, now they only have the last standing line before a bomb plant. Yeah, exactly. There, there is uh, that uh, no man's land before the B uh, bomb site where it's extremely hard to to cross, and there is again the the need for the other team to wipe again or at least to kill some people if they want to to go. Because at first uh, in the situation, people just try to go through there with smokes, etc. But now people know where to shoot to prevent the bomber to to go on the the B site. So there is uh, another fight all the time because you rarely have the good timing to to go straight to that B site. Yeah, and this is the thing. I really do think that if BF4 had more tournaments and, you know, actual teams that got paid a lot more than what they do right now, uh, then we would see timings and actual timings being recorded to see exactly how much time it would take and what time and what situation, like we see in CS and exactly. in, in games like StarCraft, especially StarCraft 2. But we're back on the backhand here as Matriku got wiped. 
and they're gonna be forced back into the base. This is very, very close, but look at Zenith, he's 13 to three. This is, uh, and well, make that 14 to three. This guy is going ham, but it's not just about the kills as Quadoblit, it is about your teamwork and where you can actually go. It's about which angles you can hold, which ears of the map itself. It's not unusual to damage. have match uh, where actually you are losing or winning with uh, more kills than the other team, even though you, you just lost, you know? So it's not unusual to have uh, a huge difference uh, ratio between uh, the number of plants and the number of kills you made. So, yeah, it's not like in Domination where kills had a kind of a big importance there. Yeah, we, we saw games after a game being turned around, but Zala getting taken down by Kupski. He's going in for the defense, but unable to get the frag here fast. Is too fast, five him. Object spraying down through. Can he get the second? Yes, double kill immediately. Able to save the day. Four players up for Matriku. Four minutes left alive as well on the, uh, the, the time there. But they will need every single second to take this one. Matriko turning back onto the C site. No bomb plant so far as the bomb is down on C. And as soon as this bomb is picked up, Che Guevara should be able to go for the spray on almost killing his own team. And from behind, Zal with a double. <laughs> this is perfect here. Kuspi Kupski with the refrag. And make that a double. This is crazy on the side itself. What can you do at this point if you're Matriku or... You're playing as Jesus Esports. This is fairly uh, crazy right now. Yeah, exactly. The both teams are kind of balanced and they have that not too safe way of playing though. So it's giving some nice fights. Well, Chevy so on the side. He gets taken down, goes for the revive. And that's a bit of a problem when it comes to the... Oh man, fast getting taken down. And that's the problem with the comms themselves. Nobody left alive except for Zal. He wants to stay alive in this one, but this is so, so lost. Two players pushing us. Che Guevara will win it out. But that is barely enough time to get the players from Team uh, e Jesus Esports. I'm, I always fail in saying their name correctly. I have to look at my second monitor. But, uh, you know, they're trying to establish that defensive line again, but fast getting taken, getting, well, getting really, really low. Zenith, Chevy taking down very, very quickly. This is a bit of a uh, blunder here. They're going to have to fall back to that second defensive line as we were talking about. Yeah. And Zalik being taken down as he went for that B site. Jesus trying to, or Kevin trying to take his position. Well, in a situation like this, what can you do on the defense? Because I'm sure you guys have been in a situation like this where Matriku do have the advantage, but, well, Kevin's uh, pretty much replying but, to us. Yeah, it's a bad situation because, you okay, you have nice lines, but you have the possibility to be to be backshaped uh, in many ways. And um, you know that if a backshape happens, actually, you have no more chance. It's, it's over. They are going to plant. So you have to do, as they are doing, actually, to have one player watching every single um, uh, side of the, of, the, of the map. Oh my god, Horming guys with a double. He goes in, nobody watching the site, but they're still sending fast right behind them. He's a bit too late though, not fast enough. And Chevy's gonna get taken down from behind. This is perfect. Fast, do they know where he is? No, they have no idea where Fast is, and Kevin's respawning in from the base. They're gonna hear the revives and the respawns, actually. He sprays down one with a headshot on a test object who fails with everything, but will indeed get a single frag on his all. They know exactly where they are, and with a minute and a half left on the clock, this might be it for this round. As Matriku are holding the line, love isn't always on the time. Yeah. If they are holding it, that will be like the example of how it is important not only to be able to plant, but to defend the plants. Because um, Jesus' um, team were able to, I think, plant two times, but uh, every time they got defused. Uh, and uh, MTK planted only one time, but it wasn't enough to win. So it can be extremely frustra frustrating. So oh my god, the. <laughs> Oh my god, I just yeah, saw it. Yeah, that was... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. there has to be some rage in the air on, t on the MTS thing right now. Uh, oh my god, I, if I, that happened to me, I would be, I guess, silent, but I will be raging inside my head, like, I want to kill someone. Um, and yeah, because sometimes you are planting one time, two times, three times, four times, but the other team is always defusing. And when the other team is planting one time, you are not defusing and you lose, even though you were dominating the whole cup. That's what is uh, beautiful and frustrating in uh, obliteration. Yeah, but now, well, remember, the boys at Matriku have a single point up. 
And as we were saying, even though it was Jesus Christ that had the advantage a couple times going for actual bomb plants, they never made it into an actual successful one because of those force plant positions. And there you go, that's going to be round 1-0 up as test object at 14 minutes. We'll grab the first and only point for Matriku Gaming as we head into the second half of this best of one. The SL go for BF4 number 88. See, that was pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, to be fair, you know the guy that had the no hits on the enemy. Yeah. I think it's something that happens sometimes when you are dropping from that balcony. I had this one time, like I shot 31 bullets at one guy at close range and he didn't die. And I was doing exactly the jump he did. So I think that it's something that happens at this point place especially and it wasn't at all the fault of the players that was shooting <laughs> bless his soul <laughs> r.i.p light a candle please press, <laughs> press f to pay respects in the stream <laughs> chat please yeah. uh, well let's see at least for now it's been very respectful between the two teams which i really like it's not like you know casting simple playing versus someone mm -hmm. uh i've 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 seen ter you know here's one thing about simple um, yeah, obviously you know who Simple is, Rella. Yeah, yeah, uh, I do. But uh, on one time, casting his team Evolution on Dust Two before he moved into Hellraisers, like mm -hmm. was it, it's like a month before he moved, and basically they were winning so hard that at some point they're like, oh, let's let's all buy AWPs, so five ops on CT Dust Two, and they double 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 stack doors. You know wow. where you can uh, double stack like go boost yeah. on yeah. on uh, double doors by CT. Well, they actually double double. So there were two four people, two, two <laughs> actual boosts watching oh with four God. AWPs. <laughs> it was pretty darn crazy. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, I wish you could have that kind of things in Battlefield 4. We, I think we had um, in Domination there was a match where the players w were you know on, on um, um, Paracel Storm yep. and there is a basketball uh, basketball uh, uh, yeah, the, the basketball field. court. Yeah and I think it was uh, the former SK team against uh, Infamous and uh, one team I think Infamous was like losing so much that they decided to play basketball instead. <laughs> <laughs> and you know it was an official stream. I think it was a go for or something like this. And uh, final, the, the game was transformed into the players trying to play basketball. <laughs> uh, the, that was like very fun. Uh, not for Infamous, I guess, but for SK. Yeah, I guess it, it sounds uh, sounds pretty darn cool. But hey, speaking of things that are cool, obviously the start of the second round on our first game for today. This is the boys and Matrico Gaming facing off Jesus Christ Esport. And obviously, uh, we're going to have game number two, Penta or Maximum now, because there are some things that we would like to talk about for Penta and Maximum, but they're going to be facing off uh, versus uh, the guys at Revo. It's going to be very interesting. Revo.exe. Uh, but Kevin's taking down one. Here's Jesus with another. Or I, I keep messing up their names, but here's Fast with one. And this is what I like. Saul is taking the wide road, the long way home, if you will, on the water side to go onto that B side. Now that's going to force one or two players from Matriku to try and turn around. But there we go. Gets the frag immediately, and the bomb is still in the middle. This is the first defensive spot that we were talking about uh, yeah, exactly. before. I mean, actually, it, it may even be the second because you ha can have the first very aggressive spots. Then if you die, you can have that balcony, and then if you die again, you have that, um, you know, no man's land uh, between the, the A point and the B point. Uh, so, from that side of, of the map, it's, it, it looks like you actually have a few defensive points, but for some reason, uh, it's, it's still a bad side. I mean, the, the, the side of uh, the Jesus team right now is generally a bit easier. I don't know exactly why, but it is. Uh, it's g it's generally easier because of the way you can get to that B site because it's elevated and it's separated It's very difficult to get to it, but yeah. once you do it's pretty much a free bomb site um, Holding off enemies is a bit easier as well You can defend from a few areas, but usually that US side is at least between me and um, Brett we consider that US side uh, easier because of the way you can go to C and with C being separated from the rest and how you can gain control of the second story, second floor on the mall. But yeah, exactly. Well, you had some pretty impressive tactics from Fnatic sometimes. Yep. They just run, 
through smokes and planted C, like without any respect for the other team. But it worked so well that they, I mean, they had, they were aware to do it. But there are some yeah blitz threats from to get that that C point on the 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 side you were talking about. Yep, that is for sure. If you're having any issues with lags, you can change the quality on the stream. Obviously, this is an ESL partner stream. Uh, no full sellout here. And well, here is Kevin trying to survive. Switch it around to that engineer kit, which you know, is something that you don't really see too much on the... Uh, well, just on playing CJ Shanghai, but he does switch over to the AEK, getting taken down by Test Object, who is holding the angle, and Koopski rotating around will grab the final one. Here's the entire push stopped, and already the boys at... Uh, the Jesus Christ. Or just, just Christ. have already rotated back to the Seaside to try and get this defense off of Matriku. Matriku won the first round with 1-0. So they're going to need to win this one 2-0 and take it 3-0 in total, or 3-1. If they want to take, you know, take it in general, or just survive for 15 minutes. Uh, personally, I like them to end it very, very quickly because, you know, reasons. But then again, I can't really hamper the uh, progress of esports as I am. I consider myself at least the Messiah of BF esports. I mean, that is true. That is true. And you're, you're casting just as Chris Tim, so <laughs> of Which course. Makes sense. There we go. Zal in control of the back. This is what I uh, really don't really like when it comes to playing on Shanghai because you can go into the stalemate, but fast trying to peek in. Does he spot one? There we go. They're trying to fight one versus one here versus Koopski. He's spraying down, but we want to go ADS. And he trades out the kill. Zal is able to help him out at the last second. Shots being fired from behind, and Drake will get the one, but fast is back up and alive with the AK in hand. 77 health, and he's going to pull back all the way to that Charlie site. And well, Jesus do not want to grab this one kill coming in, but from behind, the save, no, Drake fails completely, he's out of ammo, gets taken down, this is a bit of a fail here, but Test Object is coming back on the site, trying to save the day for his teammates, they want this held, there are only two left alive, but here's the respawn, see it looks the wrong way, performing us, able to save it, well done, so, so far it's very good defense from Matriku, yeah. but Zenith from behind. Not afraid. And one guy alive. I mean, two guys alive. But if they if they make it, okay, they didn't make it. That was actually uh. impressive because they should have been wiped several times. But there was always one guy surviving. You know, like uh, what top teams do actually. There is only uh, when they are planting. Even if four guys are falling, there is only that always that one guy camping in a corner and everybody is responding on him. Yeah, fanatic, absolutely. <laughs> and it's so annoying and frustrating for the other teams because they thought that we were going to be able to defuse, but no, is there uh, all, uh, to make a new wipe? And that's exactly how you should play uh, an uh, obliteration. Well, game er, this is ESL Go for BF4 number 88, the flak uh, 88. Of course. Uh, these are tournaments where anybody can sign up with their own 5 vs 5 team and play squad obliteration in Battle for 4. Grab 100 euros if you win uh, every single Sunday. And you can just play this as a scrim. You can sign up as well to the uh, the EU Cups now or the NA Cups as well if you want to qualify for the ESL1 Finals where you can get some money as well. A lot of money actually for playing. Or hey, if you're in the Oceanic region, they need more teams because there are only three Somehow they started the season with eight, and then Cryptic tells me, oh, well, we're down to three again, which is a bit ridiculous if you ask me. Yeah, yeah exactly. most of the teams are playing the go for it, like, as a free uh, prac, uh, as a free PCW session, because uh, the, and they know that most of them know that they're not going to win the money anyway, and it's only 20 euros per, per guy, but uh, it's a very good uh, way to have an idea of the level of the other teams because usually people are going to play serious um, contrary to some PSWs yep. so it's always a good experience to have for any team like if, if you are the top team like Fnatic who are always playing this or just a, a team that is um, just testing esports on the top field. Well, this is uh, game number one for today you can check out the brackets and all the information that you need by typing in exclamation mark bracket and oh my god that's the object Grabbing two, and that was a bit of a fail at the end. Matriku still alive and healthy. That bomb trying to get ferried to that ASAP, but double nade coming down on the one player trying to go for the carry here. Test object on his own, but homing us. Freeze now, one unable to take the second. 
And well, that's gotta be Kuski. This this is a wipe. No, it's not a wipe. Okay, two more players left alive by the actual showroom. And this is why I think that decision to go for A is a bit of a bad one. You don't have anybody holding that second story. And even though you have players on the side itself, that's not how you defend. Because a couple of grenades will force you out of position very, very easily. And Drake already losing his one teammate. He has to hold the angle. He has to hold the line. He sprays down. What sprays down to? Drake in control, getting his act together, if you will. There's still a player behind Che Kevra or Che Kevera. We're going to call him Che Guevara here as he does save this one out. Farminga is still alive. This is perfect control from Atriku Gaming as they put their teams in a perfect position. Who am I to say? I mean, this is the thing. Casters say one thing, but hey, what do we fucking know? Uh, you aren't so so wrong, but um, they didn't have the top C, okay? But they had the, you know, the, the small tunnel uh, next to the A point. And it's not acting as well as the top C, but it's still effective if people don't know you are here because you're just going to pop up and to kill the diffuser and the guy next to him most of the time. And they, so they did, they made it work, which is, okay. Yeah, that is for sure, and here we go. That's another uh, bomb now in the hands of the boys of Matriku. So let's put, give them an extra point. And well, if you want to join as one uh, as an American team, then all you have to do is head to the website on play.eslgaming.com. You can use the link right below the stream and check out in the events for Battlefield 4. You can see that you can still sign up. I think the uh, actual cup starts in one hour. And... Uh, just weird because the commentators are not the one you're used to. But who are you used to, uh, a game er? Of course, used to Jason Kaplan and Machine or Mitch Leslie. Well, hey, if you don't know who Rella is, then come on, man. I mean, why would you know who I am? But Rella, come on, it's Rella. Uh, yeah, I yeah. am a professional Tetris player. Yes, obviously, professional Agar.io player. Agar, <laughs> yeah, good. There you go, Kupski with the double, getting onto that B-side, trying to stay alive, grenades trying to push him out of position. It's a bit of a difficult spot to be in indeed. Kevin Veneth in control, able to take down two. Still Drake on the exact side where his teammate was, but he's right below the B-side. He's got a teammate as well here, homie got to help. Trying to go for the frags, he sprays down one, finally getting the headshot. Took a bit too many bullets, he goes for the second. The last cleanup on Chevy. Well done, Matriko will stabilize. They spot out the last one, sprayed on a fast. But the angle being held by Kevin so, so well. And right now he's just playing for time. But at this point with 2-0 up for Matriku, can Jesus Christ play for that kind of timing play? Um, I really don't know. No, like what I'm thinking he's trying to do was just to wait so that his teammates are doing exactly what uh, they should do. Like trying to have another chance to wipe them. Uh, in their base because I mean the good thing is that the, the boom is uh, in the enemy's base so why not try to stay here as long as you can because if you wait for to the boom to get like uh, put in a bad position or just to get to wait to the boom to get reset it would uh, be terrible because in this game there is you know that way of resetting the bomb uh, that is uh, so frustrating when you are, you are uh, in loss of time and uh, as long as you have the control of the boom, at least you are sure that the enemy are not going to, to run at the, other, um, at the other end of the map uh, with it. Of course. You know, as you say that, Drake trying to stay alive here with Matriku. He wants to do something, but the 44 Magnum. I mean, we haven't seen the 44 Magnum being used in anything forever because it got nerfed down to the ground because the one-shot headshot now is like 5 meters. meters. It's, 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 <laughs> yeah. it's, it's pretty stupid what went on, but... Speaking yep. of uh, positions that are a bit too stupid here, Zenith in control, still of lower by Waterside. He does grab one, and even though they have the information about him, the guys at Matriku were not able to capitalize on this. Zal with another headshot. He re reloads a bit too quickly there, and Test Object will be able to clean him up. This is the problem when you have an advantage or you know that there's maybe an extra player than around in the area itself. You, there's, there's no reason for you to go for a reload, and I think a lot of people do have that compulsive reload, you know, sickness, if you will. Just keep reloading to make sure you always have those, uh, those, that ammo. You never know when you're gonna run up and just go for a one v five ace. Yeah, exactly. That's true. I mean, that's the question of situational awareness. Like, um, you can't do your uh, CS:GO professional player by just try attempting kills with uh, ten bullets. 
like you know some people on CSGO they don't reel their AK because they are they know that they are going to make a, an instant headshot okay but on Battlefield 3 uh, Battlefield 4 sorry you are never sure you are going to have uh, hits on the guy <laughs> uh, you are not trusting your bullets so you should at least try to reload as, as much as you can because especially with AOK sometimes the guy is going to be to get obliterated and sometimes he's going to say no I don't want to die Yes, especially if they're French and playing on a French server. Or German on a German server, it's a server location. location <laughs> <laughs> but here we go, Kevin getting taken down from behind, he's trying to cross in and this is the problem. He only had, he only had a, one smoke to help him out and that was just not enough. Chevy being revived, Zal in control, grabs a headshot on a Hormigas. But still two minutes left alive, that's barely enough time to make anything happen. Let alone actually go for a win. They are, or you know, the only thing that they can do right now is maybe go for a tie 2-2, two, two, but I think this is pretty much GG at this point. But the fact that Jesus Christ are unable to push versus the defensive, defensive line from Matriku that is so strong right now. Very impossible to push through. Yeah, actually some many teams keep playing when they have like mathematically lost because uh, when there is a, a, like a certain time remaining, uh, even if you have the bomb, you won't have the time to plant it two times in a row, no. Um, so, sometimes you actually could leave the server, even though you can technically still plant, you know. Yeah, but, you know, it wouldn't matter, but I guess... Uh, I guess we'll stick around. Che Guevara. Of course. Yeah, he's trying to stay alive, he does have the bomb, and... I guess if Matrika can actually go for a quick bomb plant here... Remember, they went for the A plant, which is a very good decision. Because now, going for C is a bit easier, though Zal, waiting for him, will take him down. I guess this is it, less than a minute left. That bomb to respawn takes 40 seconds, so... It's pretty much our IP right now. That's called the Dice Please animation, yes. Obviously. Yo, Zenith still trying to hold the line. A game that's all but lost. Spots another taken down from two spots here. Matriku in control. And second one from Kubski. Ch Chevy trying to hold off. He's going for the 44 Magnum headshots. But my friend, 44 Mag has been nerfed. You can't do this anymore. Everybody needs to be uh, using the uh, Mare's Leg, obviously. Kappa. Well, that's actually... I think... I don't think it has been nerfed, so it's actually the only secondary weapon that can be used as, as a mini sniper yet. But uh, I mean, the Rex. The Rex, maybe. Nobody really thought about the Rex, but I guess this will be it. 2-0 GG to end our first game for today. Let's hop into the analysis desk. I really